Hi everyone. In the previous sections, we talked in detail about the various ways in which alcohols can be prepared. Like from alkene, we get alcohols via acid catalyzed hydration method or via hydroboration oxidation reaction. Now, in the first case, we get an alcohol where the OH group is attached to the most substitute carbon atom. And if we want this OH group to be attached to the less substitute carbon atom, then yes, we would need to employ this method, which is hydroboration and oxidation. Similarly, we can also obtain alcohols from carbonyl compounds via reduction using reducing agents like lithium aluminum hydride or sodium borohydride and also by its reaction with Grignard reagent. But this is all about the various ways in which alcohols can be prepared, right? But this video is not about alcohols. Here, we are going to dive into the world of phenols. Like how do we prepare phenols? How do we actually make them in the lab and in the industry? And are these reactions same? I mean, do we use the same kind of reactions both in the laboratory as well as in the industrial scale? Let's learn all about that now, okay? So we are going to walk you through four different methods that we usually employ to prepare phenol from chlorobenzene, from diazonium salt, from benzene sulfonic acid and from cumin. Okay. And along the way, we will try to also see how these reactions or why these reactions work and not just what happens, but what makes it actually stick. All right. So let's go first up haloarenes like chlorobenzene. Sounds simple. All we need to do is just swap the chlorine with an OH group, right? Well, not quite. You see, unlike how we might be easily able to swap a halogen on a simple carbon chain, doing it on a benzene ring is honestly an incredible challenge. You see, chlorobenzene, in fact, haloarenes are highly unreactive when it comes to simple substitution reactions. For instance, you will see that in this chlorobenzene, the chlorine is directly attached to the aromatic ring, right? And what do we know about this aromatic ring? Yes, the ring is already electron rich. It's going to resist the attack of any incoming nucleophile like the OH- here. And not just that, look at the chlorine atom here. We have lone pair of electrons and these lone pair of electrons are in conjugation with the pi electrons of the benzene ring. And as a result of this, the CCl bond gets a partial double bond character, which means this CCl bond is actually stronger than a regular CCl bond. So all in all, you can see that the benzene ring is highly stable and aromatic and this stability makes it highly resistant to nucleophilic substitution reaction. All right, so what do we do? I mean, if this molecule is so resistant to undergo a reaction, then why are we even discussing about it here? Well, we can make this reaction undergo, but we have to use brute force. Yes, we got to employ extreme reaction conditions. So what we do here is fuse chlorobenzene with sodium hydroxide under extreme conditions like very high temperature and pressure. So this extreme setup kind of forces the OH minus in giving us the sodium phenoxide ion, which is then acidified to get phenol. Now remember folks, this is not just a lab curiosity. This reaction is historically significant. This process often called Dow's process was one of the earliest and most successful industrial methods for producing phenol on a large scale. Now think about the engineering challenge, right? Running a chemical reaction at such high temperatures and such high pressures. This requires extremely sophisticated equipment and more importantly, a lot of safety protocols. Now you can see that this is kind of a testament to where there is a will, there is a way. Now again, the question boils down to why did we need to endure such condition? Well, the answer is simple. Phenol was and still is a critically important chemical. We use it in everything from plastics like Bakelite to pharmaceuticals and disinfectants. So you can see that the demand was so high that overcoming these technical hurdles was kind of financially viable. It made economic sense because we did need phenol in a multitudes of products. All right. So next up, benzene sulfonic acid. How do we prepare phenol from benzene sulfonic acid? So the first step obviously is to prepare benzene sulfonic acid, right? And to obtain benzene sulfonic acid, we react or treat benzene with oleum, 
which is H2SO4 plus SO3, a very concentrated mixture. And this gives us benzene sulfonic acid as you can see here. And the next step is to heat it with molten sodium hydroxide and that would give us phenol eventually. Now here's a cool part and why it works better than the chlorobenzene method. You see, when benzene sulfonic acid reacts with molten NaOH, the SO3H group right here kind of gets kicked out. Now not directly like a substitution reaction but to a series of reaction where it gets converted to stable inorganic byproducts. So if I have to touch upon the mechanism briefly, it would look something like this. You see the first step is to convert it to a sodium salt and for that we react it with sodium hydroxide. You get SO3 minus Na plus and under extreme heat of molten NaOH in the next step, a second hydroxide ion which acts as again a nucleophile replaces or pushes out this sulfonate group from the benzene ring giving us phenoxide ion and eventually phenol. Now the key here, the major driving force for this reaction is the ejection of resonance stabilized sulfide ions SO3 2 minus. Now this is an excellent leaving group and is resonance stabilized. So this resonance stabilization or the stability of the leaving group is kind of the driving force behind this reaction. All in all you can say that this method is smoother, less pressure cooked and often cleaner than the douse process that we discussed previously. All right. Next comes one of my personal favorites, the diazotization route. Here again, we first need to have diazonium salt and we can prepare diazonium salt from aniline. So it starts with aniline where we treat aniline with HNO2, nitrous acid, and we need to prepare this nitrous acid in situ by reacting NaNO2 and HCl. Now you cannot have HNO2 readily available because this again is a highly reactive an unstable chemical, it would immediately decompose to produce toxic gases like NO2 and basically it's not stable. Okay, so the best method to do is to prepare this in situ during the chemical reaction by reacting NaNO2 with HCl and remember what is the reaction condition? Look at this, we are having low temperature conditions, 0 to 5 degrees Celsius, usually done in an ice bath. And this gives us this diazonium salt, specifically benzene diazonium chloride. Now the question is why do we need to use this cold condition? You see this product here right what we get here diazonium salt is again like a ticking time bomb. At room temperature it becomes highly unstable and can rapidly decompose releasing nitrogen gas sometimes even explosively. So keeping it cold is really crucial to control this reaction. Now this step is also called diazotization and here we have a highly reactive intermediate with N2 plus group. Okay. Now this highly reactive intermediate comes in pretty handy because the next step is simply add warm water or dilute acid. And when we do that the diazonium group gets replaced by OH giving us phenol. Now why does this work so well? Because look what we have here the nitrogen gas N2 is one of the most stable molecules right and once it leaves there is no going back so this reaction is practically irreversible now correct and from a mechanistic view here is a small peak when super stable nitrogen gas leaves it often creates a temporary positively charged species here which is our aryl carbocation and imagine benzene ring with a positive charge now that's not a happy place to be correct so what it does is it immediately grabs onto any available nucleophile in the medium and what do we have water plenty of water and it immediately grabs onto the nucleophile here OH- minus, giving us phenol as a product now you will see in the later chapters that diazonium salt is actually a great way of making all kinds of aromatic compounds Chlorobenzene, bromobenzene, idobenzene and even the difficult fluorobenzene can be prepared using diazonium salt. So you can see that this one is awesome for lab scale and we can have great control and purity of our final product here. And finally let's go industrial. Yes, we are going to look at the industrial method that is the primary source of phenol that is cumin. Cumin also called isopropyl benzene. So here's how it goes. You first oxidize cumin in air forming cumin hydroperoxide and then we treat it with dilute acid giving us phenol and another super important chemical, commercially important chemical acetone. 
So this is known as the cumin process. And what's happening here? This reaction actually has a free radical mechanism. Yes, it's a free radical reaction and it starts with an initiation step where cumin reacts directly with oxygen at higher temperature giving us a cumin radical. Okay, so basically at higher temperature this hydrogen here can be easily removed and we end up getting a cumin radical. In many cases we also add a small amount of a radical initiator so we can speed up this initiation phase and get cumin radical faster. Alright, now once the cumin radical is formed, it then reacts with oxygen giving us a peroxy radical. This peroxy radical reacts with another cumin molecule and what happens? The radical abstracts another hydrogen atom from this place, regenerating the cumin radical and forming cumin hydroperoxide in the process. So this cumin radical that is regenerated in this step again continues the chain reaction occurring here. Alright. And under acidic condition, what happens is this goes through a series of rearrangement giving us phenol and acetone as the final products. Now you have some pretty interesting chemistry happening in this step where the rearrangement occurs. So if you're interested, do check out what kind of rearrangement is happening here that transforms cumin hydroperoxide to these products. Alright, now this method is again efficient scalable and more importantly it's a two-in-one method we get two important chemicals from one process the cumin process so yes phenol in your antiseptics and acetone in your nail polish remover well the same origin all right so that's it folks let's now do a quick recap what did we learn in this video we looked at the four different ways in which phenol can be prepared first one was haloarene which really demanded harsh reaction conditions to break this aromatic stronghold. It wasn't easy. We had to use brute force for the reaction to happen. And this is historically one of the first reactions that was successful to get phenol, right? In the second method, we looked at the reaction from benzene sulfonic acid, easier, softer, and less pressure cooked as compared to the first method. The driving force here was the ejection of a good living group, correct? The next one was diazonium root. We got our phenol from diazonium salt and it's extremely clean, elegant lab trick. And the last one is cumin. Cumin is the industrial king. We get acetone and phenol in one single sweep. Okay, it's not as easy as I'm saying, but you get the point, right? All right, that's all folks. Let's look at another interesting concept in the next video.